My name is Katie. I am working as a nurse. My husband is Jack. Jack is currently a full time house husband. Not long ago, Jack was working as a company employee, but he quit his job on his own accord, saying that he did not get along with his newly transferred boss. When Jack told me about this, I was angry that he had quit his job without consulting me, but I tried to think positively, thinking that it was probably a good thing that he has made the decision to quit job before he becomes depressed. Besides, even though Jack doesn't have any earnings anymore, I myself work as a nurse, and the house that we are living now was given to me by my mother, who passed away a few years ago, so we don't have to pay the rent. Which is enough to make a good living. To be honest, at first, I was anxious and stressed that my husband was not working anymore. But since he was doing a good job with the housework, I was getting used to it and enjoying this life. Then one day, I came home from work to find my sister in law, Brittany, visiting our home. Welcome home, honey. Hope you had a great day at work. I think I didn't tell you that Brittany was coming over. I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. Haha. <laughs> to be honest, I was upset with Jack, who said that as if he wasn't sorry about it. But then, it's been a while since I have seen Jack so cheerful. I see. It's totally fine, but from next time, could you tell me about it in advance? When I told him that, Jack told me that he would do so and told Brittany to start heading home. When Jack told her that, Brittany says, Already? I don't want to go home yet. Since this house has enough space and room, I think I want to sleep over tonight. <laughs> I looked at Jack's face, and in a panic, he told her, No, no, it's too sudden, Brittany. For today, please go home. When Jack told her that, Brittany glared at me and went home angrily. Why did Brittany come over today? I think it's quite a distance for her to come over. Actually, Brittany got a divorce recently. Since she has no place to go, she went back to my parents, but since my parents' apartment is such a small place, and they asked her to hurry up and find a job and give them money, she feels very unwelcomed, and I felt sorry for her. I listened to my husband. And got frustrated because I couldn't understand why he was feeling sorry for her. But then Jack said, I am sorry about today. I have been searching but couldn't get a job, and I wanted someone to listen to me for a change, so I let her in. I was angry at Jack for his selfish behavior, but I was convinced that this time he needed this and said, Okay. It's true that it's better to have someone than being alone in that kind of situation. But next time, make sure you call me and have her leave before I get back, okay? Maybe, am I spoiling Jack too much? I thought about it, but I made sure with Jack about informing me before, so I stopped talking about it to him any further that day. Two days later, Jack texted me while I was at work. Hey! Hope your day is going great at work. Brittany is saying that she wants to come over, if that is okay with you. You're working until 9 p.m. today, right? I will make sure to have her leave before 9 p.m. It's only been two days since she came over the last time. Jack said he will make sure Brittany will leave before 9 p.m., but I got worried of how long she is planning to stay. But I said, Fine! Make sure she will leave as soon as possible. I really don't want Brittany to come over, but since seeing Jack so happy about it, I will let him enjoy his time with his sister. At work, since it was a very busy day, I totally forgot that Brittany was coming over. But then, when I came back home, she was still here. Huh? Why are you still here? My husband realized I was in a bad mood as soon as I got home, so he panicked and said, I'm so sorry. I've been asking a lot of advice from Brittany without checking the time. Brittany will be leaving now. 
You see? Jack looked at Brittany and she sighed and said, Yes, yes. I will be going home now. Brittany, acting all annoyed, packed her things and left. I didn't like her annoyed attitude, so I said, What is up with her? This is not her house. Doesn't she have any sense to herself? When I said this, Jack said, You are saying too much. She came all the way out here just to hear me out. When Jack said that, I thought to myself, it didn't have to be at our house to meet up. They could have gone someplace else. But then I was too tired and said, That's right. Sorry, I said too much. I am too tired today, so I'm just going to get my rest. I think Jack wanted to say something more, but then I was too tired, so I went to bed. Next day, I had a day off, so I was relaxing at home when Jack said, About yesterday, I am sorry. When I thought about what happened, I was wrong. I thought about you and Brittany getting along, but it wasn't a good timing yesterday. Since I hadn't made some time to talk with Jack lately, and I hadn't realized how much he wanted me to get along with Brittany, I said, Oh, that's the reason. I have been so busy that I haven't made time for us. I did say too much yesterday. I am sorry. Jack was happy that we were able to talk it out, so he said, Okay. Today, I will be making your favorite dish, meatball pasta. Coming right up. After this, he started cooking, and then his phone rang. Who called? When I asked him, he said, Oh, it's from Brittany. I wonder why. Since I had a very bad feeling about it, I didn't want him to pick it up, but I told him, Maybe it is urgent. As Jack checks on me, he picked up the phone. I couldn't hear what Brittany was saying, but the call ended quickly. So, how was Brittany? I questioned Jack, and he said, She said she has something to tell me, so she's coming over here now. I didn't understand why I have to see her on my day off, so I was irritated, but since she was already coming over now, I couldn't say anything about it. I will go make Brittany's pasta also! Jack said happily and started to cook. He didn't realize I was upset and I couldn't understand why he didn't refuse her from coming over, but I thought this was the chance to tell her myself. After 10 minutes, the doorbell rang, and since our house was far away from where Brittany was staying, I didn't expect her, but it was Brittany who was at the door. She had a big luggage with her, and I had a very bad feeling about this, but I let her in the house. Jack was still preparing the lunch, so I asked Brittany myself. What happened? Brittany looks like she's crying and said, Actually, I got kicked out from my parents. They kicked me out because they said I have no right staying at their house because I wasn't working. They are such horrible parents, right? My bad feelings were coming true as I heard her out. And then Jack said, What the heck? That sucks. Family is about helping each other out. They are such horrible parents. I was ticked off by what Jack said, but since it was none of my business, I kept my mouth shut and I listened. And Brittany said, So, you see, I have nowhere to go, so I want you to let me live here. I absolutely didn't want Brittany to stay with us and tried to refuse, but before I could, Jack said, Well then, there's no other choice but for you to stay with us. Luckily, we have a spare room, so stay with us from today. I glared at Jack, and he said, What is up with that facial expression? Brittany is in need of help. As he said that, I couldn't take it anymore and said, What are you saying? Don't make this decision on your own. Jack, you are not working, and Brittany, 
You're not working either, right? I can't support two people on my salary alone. At that moment, something hit me on the head. And I didn't know what happened, but then Brittany said, Jack! <laughs> Don't throw an egg at her! <laughs> she was laughing at me hysterically, and when I touched my hair, I felt the eggshells. It's your fault, Mary. Be nicer to Brittany. If you are going to have horrible attitudes with Brittany, we are getting divorced. If we get divorced, you know that you have to leave this house, you know? Jack looked at me triumphantly, and Brittany looked at me with satisfaction. Since I kept quiet, the two thought that I was convinced by them, and asked, Mary, are you ready to apologize to us? If so, then just go take shower. And then, we can eat the meatball pasta I have prepared and start talking about how the three of us are going to live together. Jack happily started finishing preparation of lunch, and Brittany snickered at me and started relaxing on the couch watching TV. I have something to say to the both of them, but for now, I just took Brittany's luggage and threw it off the balcony. The two were surprised by the sudden action of mine and said, What are you doing? You must be out of your mind. He panicked and told me to go get the stuff I just threw out, but I said, What? Why should I have to go get it? This is my house. I won't allow you to do anything anymore. Then Jack said, What are you saying? This is our house as husband and wife. So, this is my house also, and I am letting my sister stay at my own house. I just scoffed and laughed, and to that, he said, What? What's so funny? Don't you know that I am the owner for this house? This house was given to me by my mother, so you have no right to it. Jack and Brittany looked surprised and said, For real? Oh no, that's not right. We didn't make me as the owner of the house. Even if that is the case, since you guys are still married couples, it doesn't really matter, you know. They both started mumbling, so I said, this house is my house anyways. If you want to live with your sister so badly, why don't you rent a house and live there with her? Besides, why should I take care and support people who doesn't work at all? Jack, you've been working hard up until you quit work. So... I didn't say anything about it, but recently, you are not doing any housework at all too, so honestly, I would rather live alone. When I told Jack what I had been thinking for a while, Jack said, Oh really? So that's what you have been thinking about, huh? Well... I don't want a wife who doesn't take care of my family and can't even say thank you to me for taking care of the house. As he said that, he took out a divorce paper. As I was thinking how the divorce paper was timely prepared, my sister-in-law was looking at me with a huge grin on her face. And from then on, I understood that she was the one who came up with this idea. I've already written my part, so all you have to do is to fill your part in. I'll give you some time to think alone, since you don't have any other choice. Just contact me when you want to apologize. All right. After they said that, they both left. 
I quickly took shower, completed the divorce paper, and went to submit it. I think my husband showed me the divorce papers to scare and threaten me. Even though it was the idea of Brittany's, Jack went through with the idea, and I don't want a husband who would do such a thing to his own wife. A few days later, Jack called saying, Are you ready to apologize? I really don't have any time for this. Shouldn't you be the one calling me sooner? I was so angry with Jack, who talked as if he had looked down on me. So I said, What are you calling all of a sudden? Why should I contact you, who is just a stranger to me now? When I told him that, he said, What do you mean, a stranger? Is there something wrong with your brain? <laughs> Jack does not seem to understand the current situation he is placed in. So I decided to tell him nicely. I submitted the divorce paper and it is finalized. So you and I are strangers to each other. Oh, by the way, I sold my house already, so even if you try to get back, there is no point. Also, I quit my job, and I am having a fresh new start at somewhere else. Oh, yeah, I have sent all of your belongings to your parents, and I believe that they will be arriving soon. I'm a bit worried though because your parents' place is small, so will they all fit? Jack had no idea what was happening, and it sounded like he was quarreling with someone on the other end of the phone. Anyways, you're the one who suggested on getting a divorce in the first place, right? I have nothing to say to you anymore, and since I want nothing to do with you, I will be blocking you. Goodbye. My ex husband was yelling something, but since it was none of my business, I just hung up and blocked his number. A few months later, I happened to have a chance to visit the place where I used to live. And on my way home, I stopped by a supermarket where I found someone who appeared to be my ex husband, Jack, to be working. It seems that Jack made a mistake at work and someone was saying this to him. Ugh! How many times do I have to tell you to understand? Don't make me tell you the same thing over and over. Jack was being worn by a woman who is much younger than him, while other workers who saw the scene chuckled. I felt a little bit bad for him seeing this situation, but there is nothing I can do about it because he is just a stranger to me now. Perhaps if Jack thought a little more about how to deal with his sister, this might not have happened. But in any case, now I am glad I divorced him because I am enjoying my life being single. <laughs>